Hey guys, TechieKHD here again with another video, and today I'm going to be giving you guys a quick look at iOS 10, uh, the public beta release. Now, I've been holding off of this for a little while because I wanted to make sure that there was a stable version available um, instead of updating to the developer betas, which I probably wouldn't have found totally stable. But the public beta has been out for a little while, I've been using it for a little while, and I've really come to enjoy some of the new features, so I thought I'd take you guys uh, through some of the features that I enjoy the most. Let's start out with iMessage. Now iMessage has actually been updated in a fairly major way. Now Apple has really felt the heat from competitor um, messaging applications such as Snapchat, uh, which have really been taking over the market share for texting. Uh, and it's something that's got Apple kind of scared. So they wanted to introduce a bunch of new features into iMessage, including um, different levels of how you can send messages in message bubbles like this, including with invisible ink or large texting, things like that. Uh, we also have improved functionality uh, in terms of attaching things and you actually have a GIF keyboard built right into the actual Apple keyboard which is interesting to see. Um, this is something that's become popular in the Google Keyboard app that I've been using for a while as well as in Messenger applications such as Facebook Messenger uh, using the Giphy keyboard which is a popular one. Um, there's also functionality for drawing and sending things to people very similar to what you would find on the Apple Watch and I think this is meant to integrate most um, effectively with the Apple Watch and it's something that's quite interesting. Also for attaching photos now we have a much better live view for actually taking a photo and attaching it as well as better thumbnails um, to select photos and just send them straight up from your camera roll without actually having to open up that um, section which allows you to set as wallpaper, send via airdrop and things like that inside of the messaging application. It's a bit of a refinement, we also have uh, some refinement on the emojis, I can't say that I love them too much, I really like the classic emoji style, and I hate that a lot of messaging applications, including Facebook Messenger, have been messing with them for a while, but I guess that's a really small gripe. Uh, the photos application has also been totally redone. We have a better uh, infrastructure for looking at our albums with better covers and uh, more rich information. There's also a section here called memories which allows you to create little video um, documentaries of your photographs and this is pretty much done automatically. It plays with music. It's basically just the older slideshow um, feature on steroids pretty much is the best way that I can describe this. Um, Outside of photos, I think another interesting update is to notifications and the lock screen. Now this has actually also been redone pretty drastically. Now slide to unlock is no longer a thing on the iPhone, which is kind of the end of a very iconic thing, but I think it pretty much died after Touch ID was first released. Uh, now if you swipe over like you normally would to unlock, you actually get all of your widgets and things that you would normally find inside of Notification Center, and the notifications show up on the main home screen, and they're actually even more interactive and easy to deal with. Uh, and if you're wondering the way that you would unlock your phone is actually pressing the home key to unlock. Now this is probably a feature that comes uh, because of the Touch ID's speed on the iPhone 6s uh, and how people were generally missing notifications. Now just touching it wouldn't unlock the phone uh, and you would actually have to physically press the home button. It's actually quite intuitive and I really do like it. This also definitely signals uh, that the home button is going to be around for a while. Uh, rumors had shown that it wasn't going to be able to be everywhere on the new iPhones for a little while is what we've been uh, thinking about, but it actually looks like it's here to stay. Notifications are also a lot better handled inside of Notification Center. You can clear individual notifications instead of grouping them and deleting them, and they're actually sorted chronologically, which I think is a much better way of sorting notifications. It just helps me figure out where everything is. Now that menu is accessible from anywhere inside of iOS so long as you pull down Notification Center. Other apps including news and music have also been updated. Actually a lot of applications have seen some major overhauls. The news application for the first time is actually usable. I think that this is a really nicely done app and it's a pretty good alternative for things like Flipboard. Uh, Apple Music has definitely been uh, given an overhaul. It has a cleaner and more cohesive look throughout of the application. Uh, now personally I'm still more of a Spotify person. I haven't been paying for Apple Music and I don't use it. I just use the music that I have downloaded inside of the app. Uh, every now and again, but Spotify is my primary music player. I don't even remember the last time I opened iTunes. But I think that it's a better redesign, I just think that the letter counter up top still looks a little weird. 
Apple Maps has actually seen a pretty major overhaul as well. This is the general theme for all of the applications in iOS 10. Maps actually looks really, really nice now. It's almost good enough to use uh, versus Google Maps, which is generally my um, direction application of choice wherever I am. Now, of course, we know that uh, Apple Maps supports New York City Transit and Transit and a bunch of other locations now, but it's just a richer, better designed app now, and it doesn't seem to crash or give me misdirections as much as it used to. We've also seen the inclusion of a HomeKit app, which basically allows you to control all of your HomeKit enabled devices. Now, I don't really have any. I use LifeX instead of Philips Hue, for example, so I can't really show you this, but basically it gives you all of your HomeKit connected devices in one application, which I guess is pretty much the best way to handle it. Now, one of my favorite features in iOS 10 is the ability to delete stock Apple apps such as the Apple Watch app, tips, iBooks, and things of that nature that you just don't ever use. It's something that I wish we'd had a long time ago and we finally do. Now, Control Center has seen a bit of a major um, overhaul as well. This actually looks very similar to a tweak that I tried back when my phone was jailbroken a while ago for Control Center in terms of the design. Um, our music controls are actually now on a swipe over basis as well, um, and it actually supports artwork and rich information display from other music applications such as Spotify, and it's not restricted just to iTunes, which is actually a pretty interesting feature. Now as for smaller updates, we've seen improvements and changes to the sounds, that be the lock sound or the clicking sound on the keyboard. There's also been some minor improvements to Siri, but Siri has always been uh, a really, really useful and effective personal assistant, but we're probably going to see more of these at the public release. Now, if you guys would like to download the Apple uh, iOS 10 beta or even uh, beta software for your Mac in the future, you can go ahead and sign up for the Apple beta software program right on their website. It's pretty easy. It makes you install... Um, one set of permissions from Apple, and after that you can go ahead and download the latest version of iOS to your device to test it out. Now, I would normally wait for these public betas before, um, instead of getting the developer betas, because I noticed that they're a lot more stable, and it's something that I would definitely recommend if uh, the device you're installing on is your main device. I've only noticed minor hiccups with um, iMessage and things of that nature, but it's not, it hasn't been something that stopped me from using the developer beta. Uh, I haven't noticed a lot of app crashes or anything of that sort, and so I can definitely recommend going ahead and trying it out if it's something that you're interested in. Either way guys, that's about it for this video. I really hope that you enjoyed this, and if you guys are looking forward to iOS 10, let me know in the comment section below. If you like this video, remember to hit the like button, and for more videos like these, remember to subscribe. Thanks again for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.